Hello, good people of YouTube. Today, I wanted to share with you five of my favorite custom nodes in Comfy UI. Now, the first one is up here, and this is basically a system resource monitor. So it shows you your CPU usage, your system RAM, GPU, VRAM, temperature, and hard drive. And every now and then, some of you will ask, what the heck is that? So go into your manager, custom nodes manager, and search for Chris, C-R-Y-S. You'll come across Chris tools. So go ahead and install that. And when you do, if you go into your settings, you'll now see a section here for Chris tools. If you click on that, this is where you can adjust the pixel width. So if you look at the top here, you see that it's going to get wider. And then we have the height. And then below here are the various resources that you can monitor. You just have to toggle them on. Pretty self-explanatory on what they do. And then you'll get this nice little system resource monitor. This next one is called Llama Remover. I call it an object remover. Super simple and powerful. This is the workflow. That's it. So let's say I want to remove something from this image. We're going to open it in the mask editor and I'm going to take out this logo here. So I'm simply just going to mask it here, save it to the node, go ahead and click Q. And just like that, the logo is removed. If we zoom in here, it's practically seamless and it works super fast. You do have two main settings for threshold and radius, but the default works really well. Now to find it within the menu without searching for it, just right click, add node, you'll see llama remover here, and then you'll see big llama remover. Speaking of removing things, the next one is called Inspironet Remove Background. So very useful, and once again, a very simple workflow. We only have five nodes here. Basically upload your image. We have a preview for the mask and the final output. I'm gonna click on Q. And this works super fast, as you see, it's already done. If we go look really closely here, see that, yeah, it leaves a little bit of the edges, but considering that it's free and super simple to set up, it's actually really good. And we can clean this up with a slight image to image. Now it's not perfect. There are some images that it may struggle with, especially with a busy background, but super, super useful, especially if you're into compositing your images. In the Comfy UI Manager, this is the one you want to search for, Comfy UI Inspironet Rem BG. Now to find it in the menu, you want to right click, add node under image. You'll see it right here, Inspironet Rem BG. Now, if you're like me and you like to draw your compositions, this next node is something you might want to check out. It comes from Alec Pet. And I'll just show you a really simple example here. Let's change the background to something like blue. Up top, you have various options. I'm not going to go through all of them, but this is your brush. Here's your eraser, some shapes, and you can enter text as well. You've got fill in the stroke. So I'll make the brush here about 20. Let's do sort of like a boat in the water type of scene. Voila, masterpiece. Now I have this set up where I'm using SDXL and an old SDXL Lightning LoRa just to show you really quickly, but you can use whatever model you choose. The Lightning Turbo models are good if you want something really quick. And I'll just put something simple, sailboat in the ocean on a sunny day. Let's try it with just 0.6 denoising. That way we at least keep the same composition, right? There you go. It's running through the sampler. We see our little preview. So you see with the denoising at 0.6, it keeps the composition. Or you can crank this up to like, let's try 0.8. And it's just going to get the general idea of the composition and then produce something like this. And for the most part, it gets the idea I had in my head. And I can even use this as a control net, or I can throw it into image to image. If I wanted to use better quality models, I can do that. Depending on your GPU, generation speeds may vary. I like using the quick lightning or turbo models just to get a rough idea and then push this into a different workflow. So within your Compute UI Manager, you want to search for Alec Pet. And this is the one here, Alec Pet, Comfy UI, Custom Nodes, Alec Pet. To find it in your menu, right click, add node. You'll see a section for Alec Pet nodes. Under image, you'll see painter node. Out of all the nodes that I've showed you, this one is my favorite. 
And this is for those of you that don't really like the noodles and you want sort of a wireless setup. This is just a basic generation workflow. And uh, if you look here, you see that the wires are there, but some of the other ones don't have them. And that's because I have them hidden. What I'm doing with these nodes is that I can enable my all-in-one models here. I've got my standard unit models here that require text encoders and the VAE. And then I have my guff models here. And what I do with this workflow is that I just toggle the kind of model that I want to use. I'll select the model here and generate an image. If I feel like I want to use guff models for flux, I can just set this up, choose a model and go. And I can do this with set and get nodes. So if I open up these here, and you'll see that I've set this as the main model input. And then I have AIO, which is the all-in-one model, get guff, and then get unit. I'll show you a very quick example of how this works, but let me show you the custom node first. So in the manager, go into custom nodes, and you want to look for KJ nodes made by the legendary Kajai, KJ, <laughs> however you pronounce it. One of the goats of Comfy UI custom nodes. So go ahead and install it. Let's start with the checkpoint loader. I'm just going to pull these out and remove the inputs here. Now to access the nodes in the menu, you can right click, add node. You'll see a section for KJ nodes and you'll see the two here, set and get. However, it's much easier to just hover over the node, right click, you'll see them at the top, get and set. Now it works really simply, go ahead and right click and we're going to set the node, okay? So first we want to input what we want to call this node and I'll just call it model. And then we're going to connect the node to this. It's going to adopt that color. We'll do the same thing for the clip and call this clip. You see that it turns yellow and you guessed it. We're going to do it one more time and call this VAE and connect that. So think of it as a signal. This is sort of like a transmitter, but in order to get the information from these nodes, we need some sort of receiver. So we need to create a get node. Typically we're going to connect model to model here, but what we can do now is right click once again, instead of set, we're going to choose get. And if we click on here, we see now that we have the three options. So we're going to select model, connect this to the node. We'll do the same thing for clip, right click, add get node. We're going to select clip, connect it there. And basically you would do that with all the nodes here. Now, obviously for a simple setup like this, it's kind of overkill. Once you're done and you close these off, it looks nice and neat. You can even hide them behind the nodes here. Move that over here. We'll hide these behind the LoRa loader. And in a sense, it's like having wireless connections. So going back to this simple workflow, I basically did that with all the nodes here. So if I remove the sampler here, you see all the get nodes hidden and it just keeps things nice and neat. And if you even want to go beyond that, I've been experimenting with this setup where this is sort of my main interface here. I've got control net, upscaling, image to image, all the workflows that I use main area here for all the models, but all the rest of the workflow here is on the right side. So if I zoom out, you see all my workflows here. This is my main work area. Let me turn all of these on so I can kind of just show you a quick glimpse. And I just have all the get nodes here. If I open them up, you can see that I've set up every input just like how I showed you a few minutes ago. So this is my standard image generation. Here's my image to image. Control net, in paint, out paint. Now I tried to share samplers to combine some of these workflows, but it just got a little too complicated and crazy. So the workaround was to just keep each sampler for each workflow and then use any switch from RG3 nodes so that when they're not active, it only uses the active workflow, right? Now, obviously these are nodes that I love to use and I'd love to hear from you, which are some of your favorite custom nodes in Comfy UI. In the next couple videos that are coming up, I'll be showing you how I use these particular custom nodes in my own workflow. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.